Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. <laughs> From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, George Clooney, Kumail Nanjiani, and music from Lenny Kravitz with Cleto and the Cletones. And now, Jimmy Kimmel. Some nights, it's harder to do the show than others some nights. Sometimes bad things happen, and, you know, when they do, we try to make sense of them. But then we have situations like this morning that make no sense at all. I actually had to ask myself, how can we live in a society where something like this is allowed to happen? Best performance by a male actor in a motion picture, musical, or comedy. Matt Damon, air. <laughs> What, the, what gives, you know? What gives? Another stain on the so-called Golden Globes. But the other big news here in L.A. is this is something everyone was talking about this weekend. The richest contract in the history of sports, Shohei Otani, the reigning baseball MVP, he hits and he pitches. People are jumping. <laughs> trying to deal with the Dodgers. For $70 million a year, Dodgers will pay him $700 million over the next 10 years. Hot dogs from now on will be priced at $500 a piece. <laughs> Otani is leaving the Angels organization, which was a tough decision, but ultimately you say he just wanted to explore a different part of the freeway and now he's come here. <laughs> Are you excited, Guillermo? Very excited, Jimmy. Yeah, you're, I mean, you love the dog. Uh, yes. Yeah, and you're pounding on your microphone. Oh, sorry, right here, yeah, sorry. How's so excited. Your, how has your Hanukkah been so far? Oh, oh, it's, it's going good. It's going good, yeah. Yeah, it's going good. You know, Washington tonight, President Biden hosted the annual White House Hanukkah party. They had to, they had to end the ceremony prematurely because apparently Biden mistook the menorah for a birthday cake and blew out all the candles. <laughs> Grandpa Joe spoke about Hanukkah. He said it's a timeless story of miracles and that even in dark times, we can find the light. You know he was thinking about getting up to pee eight times <laughs> every single night. Meanwhile, Hunter Biden is in a lot of trouble. Federal prosecutors have charged Hunter Biden with nine crimes, including tax evasion, failure to file and pay taxes, and filing a false or fraudulent return. According to the special counsel, Hunter spent millions of dollars on an extravagant lifestyle rather than paying his tax bills, which he's like the son Donald Trump never had. He really is. <laughs> the details are, um, are fascinating, actually, to say the least. They say Hunter made more than uh, $1.6 million in ATM withdrawals. He spent around $683,000 on payments to various women, over $237,000 on health, beauty, and pharmacy, which you thought you had a long receipt at CBS. Yes, that's a lot of... $188,000 on adult entertainment, and a little over $71,000 on rehab and re-rehab and re-rehab for a grand total of almost $5 million, which is, I mean, that's like an early 2000s Charlie Sheen caliber performance. <laughs> it's impressive. The White House has reiterated, which um, he, they reiterated that President Biden will not pardon Hunter if he is convicted of any crime, although they didn't say anything about not dressing him up as a turkey next Thanksgiving and pardoning him then. <laughs> and then we have Donald Trump, who undoubtedly wants to pardon himself. He ignored his lawyer's advice. He agreed to testify at his $250 million fraud trial in New York today, a decision that was trumpeted emphatically last week by his lawyer slash hype lady. He still wants to take the stand, even though my advice is at this point, you should never take the stand with a gag order, but he is so firmly against what is happening in this court and so firmly for the old America that we know, not this America, that he will take that stand on Monday. He will open himself up to whatever they want because he's not afraid. People that are afraid cower. President Trump doesn't cower. We'll be back on Monday. Right, okay, so that was Thursday. 
Guess who opted not to testify today? I'll give you a... Uh, guess who instead decided to cower? Well, that's right. Fatlock was nowhere to be seen. He posted it. He didn't show up because he had nothing more to say about it. And then posted all day about it, a hundred different things. I don't get it. It's not like Trump... He, he, does, he doesn't go back on his work. He must have had... Maybe his volunteer work took him away from it. I don't know. But <laughs> Trump had plenty to say on Saturday. He was at a gala for New York Young Republicans where he treated the crowd to a very normal, uh, very rational thought. And I was just asking Secret Service, how the hell do they know I'm in the car? Because we have windows this thick. They're, like, really good. Very good. I have guys walking up to that thing. If they held a little thing, I'd say, go ahead, shit, shit. You know what happens? The bullet bounces back and kills them. That's what I... Well, I got him. They say, I got this guy. I got him. Go ahead and shoot. Here I am. Shoot. Bing, bong. That's the end. I like when he does his own sound effects. Bing, bong. That's the end. <laughs> then he floated another new one about the imagined shadow governments in what they call the deep state. Our mission in this race is to win a historic and powerful mandate to take back our nation from the shadow government of corrupt alliances, hidden, hidden people. They hide under carpets and rugs. Right, carpet. That's not a Roomba, it's George Soros. It's, they hide under carpets and rugs. You know, just because Melania hides from you under carpets and rugs doesn't mean that other people do that. It's unusual. And then we have George Santos, who is, thank you, not as slick as Donald Trump. Every time Trump gets indicted, he rakes in the cash. But George Santos not doing too badly himself. We're back with former Congressman George Santos, who within four seconds of leaving office has found a new career on Cameo. What is that about? Look, you know what's funny? Uh, the idea came from a former Kevin McCarthy staffer. He reached out and says, George, you have such a large personality. The people love you. You should just open a Cameo. I'm like, what's a Cameo? So I looked into it. I'm like, oh, that's what that's called. The videos where people send you birthday wishes. I opened it. Yeah, so now uh, this Cameo thing, according to George, is really paying off. He claims he's made more money in seven days than he did in Congress for a year. And part of that money came from me. I sent him a bunch of crazy <laughs> video requests because I wanted to see what he would read and what he wouldn't read. And I showed some of them on the air on Thursday. Um, and now he's demanding $20,000 from me <laughs> to be paid a commercial rate. Can you imagine if I get sued by George Santos for fraud? I mean, how good would that be? It would be like a dream come true. But, so since I started... Buying his videos, his rates went way up to $500 a piece. He should be thanking me for buying these videos. But I have a big stockpile. You want to see one? Yeah. Okay. Again, George had no idea these requests were from me. I just wrote them and sent them in. So, will Santos say it? Here we go. George, can you please congratulate my legally blind niece, Julia, on passing her driving test? They said she couldn't do it, even shouldn't, but she's taught herself to be able to drive safely using her other senses. She's not a quitter. That said, the day after she got her license, she got in a really bad car accident. So if you could also wish her a speedy recovery, that would be amazing. She's in a body cast and very bummed out, but with help from Jesus and President Trump, soon she will be back on the road. Okay, will George Santos say it? Hey, Julia! I just want to wish you congratulations on getting your driving test. You prove that even the legally blind can do it. I know that it's a bummer that right after you got the test and you show that you weren't a quitter, you got into that little accident. Look, the, a body cast ain't much. You'll, you'll, you'll you ace this. You will rock this as soon as you're out of that body cast because you're you're awesome and Jesus and President Trump will make sure that you're back on the road soon and you're going to be amazing. Uncle Joe sends his love and I want you to never give up on your dreams because you are not a quitter, Julia, and I love you. Bye. That's very sweet. Very... <laughs> you want one more? All right. All right. One more. 
This is for an imaginary friend named Heath. I wrote, hey, George, my friend Heath just came out as a furry. <laughs> and I'd love for you to tell him that his friends and family all accept him. His fursona is a platypus mixed with a beaver. He calls it a beaverpus. <laughs> Can you say, we all love you, beaverpus? He also just got the go-ahead from Arby's corporate to go to work in the outfit. So we're all so happy for him to be himself at work and at home. Could you also do a loud yif, yif, yif? That's the sound <laughs> Beaver Puss makes as Beaver Puss. Thank you so much. All right, will Santos say it? Yay! Hey, Heath. George Santos here. I'm so proud of you for coming out as a furry, and I just wanted to tell you that your friends and family all accept you. And they're all excited about your fursona, which is uh, awesome to be a beaver puss, a beaver and a platter puss. So let me tell you, uh, they all love you, beaver puss. Don't you ever get your head down and don't you ever, ever let anybody tell you what you can and can't be. I'm so proud that the corporate folks at Arby's gave you the go ahead to go to work in your persona. So if you could just, you know, live it up and be as perfect as you want, just keep doing you and yiff, yiff, yiff. Bye. Yiff, yiff, yiff. That's right. Right back at it. <laughs> we'll have more as the week goes on. Christmas is two weeks away. Um, I already have a pile of holiday cards, but not everyone has their holiday act together, so we thought it might be fun to uh, help some people. Let's go out to Hollywood Boulevard right now where our announcer, Lou, looking very businesslike, is standing by. Hi, Lou. Hey, what's going on, Jimmy? Uh, Lou, are you experiencing holiday cheer on the boulevard tonight? You know, I feel like this, uh, the boulevard Spider-Man have a little extra spring in their step today. So. What's going on out there? Is there a big premiere or something happening? I don't know. They're just kind of doing construction. Oh, so. yeah. They're always doing something. All right. Well, we asked Lou to find us a family uh, that is visiting from someplace. And you found a family, right, Lou? I did. Okay, let's meet the family. Hi, family. How are you? Dale? Hey, how are you? Oh, good thing you guys are wearing name tags. Dale Brenna. <laughs> Lennox, Elita, and Duke. Hey, we had a German Shepherd named Duke. <laughs> <laughs> Duke, how old are you? Eight. All right. Elita, how old are you? Five. Five? How about Lennox? Lennox, how old are you? Five. Three. <laughs> <laughs> you could be a congressman telling lies like that, Lennox. <laughs> um, what's your last name, folks? Langley. Langley. Now, I understand I was told that you have yet to take a holiday uh, photo. True. Is that correct? True. Yeah. yeah. True. OK. Yeah. OK, Lou, I want you to bring it. Would you want to take care of that right now? Is this something you're interested in handling right now? Sure. OK, Absolutely. all right. Yeah, Lou, bring them in here, OK? Come right. on in, guys. All right, here we go. The Langley family's coming in. We have a, um, we got a whole setup now. All we have is. Oh, I didn't know you were in this. Yes, how are you? When did you change into that costume? Uh, like 10 minutes ago. Oh, you look great. Thank you, yeah. Do you have good. to pee? Why are you dancing? <laughs> no. I just like feel the holidays, you know? Okay. Oh, here they are. Say hello to the language, everyone. Hi, guys. How are you? Dude, yeah. come over here. Hi, parents, too. This come over you. here, guys. <laughs> Thank you. This might be a little bit big yeah. on you here, Duke. Parents. All right, no, these are for, dude, come over here. I'll give you one right here, all right? I'm going to help you put this on. Yeah, this is going to be very, very big. Come Lennox, come over here. We'll put you in a sweater. Now, all right. Dude? No, it's backwards, Duke. All right, that's all right. <laughs> all right, close enough. All right. We got this, and we got a very big one for Lennox. Lennox, this is... Lennox. All right, here we go, Lennox. Are you excited about Christmas? Huh? OK, come in here, guys. Now, just sit on this couch, and you can put on that Santa cap if you like. I got a camera here, so I'm going to take the photo. And Elf Guillermo is going to be in there with you, too. Uh... And I want some really nice smiles, OK? OK, yeah, put Lennox on your lap there. I yeah. feel like we're missing something, though. I don't know what it is. Maybe. Is it there. candy canes we're missing? Uh, you know what we're missing? We're missing Uncle George. 
Oh, yeah. Hey guys. Great. I, I think we got it. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Duke, Duke, Merry do Christmas. you know who this is? Uncle George. That's yeah. right. It's Uncle George. <laughs> <laughs> Merry, Christmas, Merry Christmas, family. Merry Christmas, Christmas. Uncle George. Yeah. Hey, we'll be right back. We have a great show for your night. Camille now. Johnny's here. Music from Lenny Kravitz. I'll be right back with George Clooney. Hold on, don't